So we have a very interesting topic for today that is mathematical statistics. <clears throat> the whole of this cannot be, uh, you know, the lecture for whole of this syllabus cannot be given in one day. It will take time. It will take at least four or five lectures to understand these. Let's understand what mathematical statistics is. What is the scope of mathematical statistics? It says that statistics is the science of counting. It is the science of taking averages and estimates. And how we do that? by collecting data, by arranging data in tables and graphs, we arrange the data and then what we do, we take the averages and the estimates. For example, we take mean, median, mode, variance, standard deviation, you must have heard of these terms. So that is statistics and our syllabus is mathematical statistics. So we will be looking into statistics from mathematical point of view and we will be covering this much of syllabus. So let's first of all see what are measures of central tendency. Let's take an example. We have a class of 100 students and the marks student marks uh, obtained by each student is given. A has obtained let's say 63 marks, B has obtained 69 marks, someone has obtained 52 marks and so on. We have all the data let's say like this 52, 57, 60. 9, 99, 42. So, like this, we have 100 data. This is collection of data. Then, if I tell you that the average marks obtained in this class is 61, by saying this, what, what you get? You get an idea of where the data is actually centered. That is, what, what is the expected mark? So, if someone tells you that he is a student of this class, you know he will be around 60, 61, 62. So this is where the data is centered. The methods that actually tell you where the data is centered are the measures of central tendency and we will be studying arithmetic mean that is simply called mean, median, mode, geometric mean and harmonic mean. These five are the most popular measures of central tendency and most of our, our work is done by this. Second is measures of dispersal. What are the measures of dispersal? We have range, quartile deviation, mean deviation, standard deviation, variance. What is the meaning of dispersal? I told you the average marks obtained by students is 61. But that doesn't tells, tells you how the data is scattered. Has someone scored below 30? Or has someone scored above uh, 90 also? So we know where the data is centered, but we don't understand, we don't have any idea of the scatteredness of the data. So that we study under this topic, measures of this person. What are they? Range, simply the highest marks minus lowest, lowest marks is range. Then we have quartile deviation, we will study mean deviation, we will study standard deviation and variance. Then we have all these sorts of measures. Then we analyze the data by using moments we study skewness of graphs so we study skewness what is the skewness if the graph is like this by looking at the glass um, at the graph by looking at the graph you are able to understand that if it, this is the mean point we have equal distribution below and above this point but if this graph is like this We have a very steep slope and then a very slow descent this side. Now this tells some other story. So this is studied under skewness of the graph. Then we have kurtosis. Just for uh, your knowledge sake, a graph can be like this. A graph can be like this. So we have different flatness of the graph is different. So this is studied under kurtosis. These Topics are particularly useful for students who are doing higher studies in mathematics. But for others, this is the part that they should know. So if you are doing bachelor's degree in uh, mathematics, statistics or engineering, you must have concept of 
central measures of central tendency, measures of dispersion, then only you will be able to understand moments, skewness, and kurtosis. This whole syllabus is required for you to understand the concept of random variables, that is, distribution functions or stochastic processes. So you must, uh, you know, go through all the videos on this topic and then start with random variables. Let's start with the very basic of statistics. First is collection of data. How we collect data? I just told you we have 100 students in a class and we have the numbers obtained by them by each of the students. So we collect the data and then what we do, we make a table that is called frequency distribution table. How we do that? So we can create table like this, class 50 to 59. So how many students have scored between 50 and 59? So that will be the frequency. Let's say 20 students have scored between the smarts. Then 60 to 69. Let's say 30 students have scored. Then 70 to 79. 15 students. 80 to 89. Let's say again 15. And then 90 to 99. So this will be 30, 30, 60 and 20, 80. We have 100 students. So this will be 20. So 20 students have scored between 90 and 99. We use tally. How we, what we do? First student, if someone has brought between 50 and 59, we place a line, then 2, 3, 4, and then cut 5, then again 1, 2. So these are very basic things. Everyone knows. So by this, we write the frequency. This is tabulation of the data. Now, there are few more things that you must understand. One thing is called frequency distribution. So this was frequency distribution. This is the table. Second is histogram. It is a graph that represents this. So let's say this is 10, this is 20, this is 30. So 50 to 59, it's 20. So let's say this is 50 to 59. Then 60 to 69, it's 30. Maybe this is not very straight. Then we have 70 to 79, 15. And then 80 to 89, again 15. And this is 20. This is the class. This is the frequency. Okay, so this graph is called histogram. You can see between 50 and 60, there are 20 students, 50 and 60 marks. So this is histogram. If we connect the midpoints of these graphs, this is called frequency polygon. If the interval, class interval becomes very low, very less, and number of observation becomes very large quantity, then this actually takes the shape like this, a very continuous form of graph that is called frequency curve. So these are some basic concepts. Now we will start with our actual study.